It's December 2nd. Welcome to another Advent Calendar video. Today we are going to talk about UIView and we're going to use it in some ways that you might not have seen before. So let's get right to it. So let's open up Xcode and create a new project by pressing Command Shift N on the keyboard and we're selecting a single view application and let's call it View Project. Hit next and create that on the desktop. I'm going to make my Xcode window a little bigger here. And what we are trying to achieve now are two things and two very distinct ways of using UIView. And UIView, as you know, is also what is in your view controller. So we have a UI view, you can access it using self.view in your view controller class. And you could add a sub view right here, we could change the background color and add multiple other elements like a button or whatever we want to it. But sometimes what you want isn't a view in your view controller just yet. Let's say you want to add it later or you want to animate it in, but you need all of your user interface elements that, you're, that you have positioned already here in place and you don't want to put another UI view on top of it. So Xcode gives you a great way to do just that. So what we can do is selecting our UI view from the object library and instead of dragging it right into our view controllers view, we drag it to this top bar next to the first responder. And then with that, we get another UI view, which is a free form UI view. We can just play around with the size here a little and we can adjust the size here as well. And here we can make all our adjustments that we would like to have. We can give it a background color. Let's choose maybe a dark gray color here, or maybe something more festive, maybe uh, a nice red color. And we can also add, uh, let's say a label right here and put it in the center. Let's say this is maybe about a feature um, that you want to introduce or something like that. And you could even add constraints here using auto layout. You can use auto resizing masks here. So we can put it just in the center of our view. We could also add another button, for example, to the lower right corner, for example. So let's just put that right here. Let's also set the auto resizing mask here. Um, to the right and pin it to the right and pin it to the bottom. And with that, you can see in this little animation where our button is going to be positioned. And that's just what we actually want. Let's maybe also change the color of the button to a dark color and make it a little stronger. Let's say semi bold and increase the size a little. And with that, we have our user interface complete. Let's just say that's what we want. And now we actually want to put that into our actual view controller. So how do we go about that? Well, the cool thing about it is that you can bring up the assistant editor again. And just as you could do with any other view, you can also create an outlet for that particular view. And I'm just selecting it in my view controller scene and drag it to the assistant editor with control on my keyboard pressed. And I release and I create an outlet and calling it feature view. And with that, I'm actually almost done. Let's close the assistant editor, bring up our view controller. And now we would like to add our feature view to our view controller. And all we need to do for that is to use self dot view add sub view. And we want to add the feature view. So let's run this in the simulator and see what actually happens with that. So here's the simulator. Let's see what happens. And boom, there is our feature view. And you could also change the attributes of your feature view. You could give it a different background color. For example, we could set it to a gray color, um, run this again, and we can just deal with it just as we would with any other normal view. So let's just see, here is our changed background color. So this works perfectly. And what you could also do is again, type in UI view in the object library, and you can add as many views as you want 
in this way. So this is one interesting way of working with views and we can also close them down so that we don't have to see them. We can click back on them and bring them up again. So this is just great to save some space, to make your life really easier when it comes to working with these views. But there is one more thing you need to consider. This makes definitely sense to use if you only need one instance of your view later placed into your view controller, for example. But you cannot really reuse that view in a way you could with a custom built class. But don't worry, we do not need to write everything in code just because we want a custom class to uh, create multiple instances of a view. What we can do instead is creating a zip file. So I'm selecting my view controller dot swift file, press command N, and then I'm selecting a user interface element here in my template chooser, and I'm selecting simply a view. Let's hit next and let's call that feature. And with that, we have a feature zip. And this is just a, an ordinary UI view. And we can now change its size to a free form as well. And that lets us resize the view just as we would like to have it. So I'm giving it just about a size that I really like, something like that. Also, again, choose a nice color. Let's bring up label, maybe. Let's put that somewhere here. Let's call it feature, feature title. Let's maybe increase the size a little. Also, maybe make it bold. So this is going to be the feature title. Let's center it. And then we might also want to add a button and tell that button to be um, by feature or something like that. And let's also change the color a little, maybe also to black or maybe even this time white. Also make this bold, increase the size a little. And again, we could use auto, uh, auto layout here, adding some constraints. We can also use um, auto resizing masks here. So I'm just pinning it to the bottom here and pinning it to the top, our feature title. And with that, we're good to go from our user interface point of view. And now the cool thing about that is that we can also create outlets for all of these elements that we have placed into our zip file. So what I can do now is again, select my view controller, press command N on the keyboard, select a Coco touch class, hit next. And then we're simply creating a subclass of UI view. Let me call that feature view hit next and create. And then we can connect our feature view here in the zip file by selecting a view, choosing the identity inspector and give it a custom class, but not the label. I want the view. So here we have a class UI view and we enter a custom class here, which is going to be our feature view. And now I'm going to bring up the assistant editor and as you can see, we have automatically selected our feature view here in the assistant editor. And I can now press control on the keyboard and create all of the outlets I want. So let's maybe call it feature title and make some space here. And maybe this is the purchase button. So I connected both of them. And with that, we have the outlets that we need to configure our feature views if we want to have multiple instances of that. So let's say we've completed our user interface now and we'd like to use that view now in our view controller. So this time it is actually not available in the storyboard and we can just create an outlet for it, but we can do something else. We can do it going to our view controller dot Swift file. And um, let me just add some comments around what we just did. And we can create a feature view two, for example, and we can use the bundle main and then load nip named. And the name that we have to uh, specify here is actually the name of our nibbar zip file that we have created. So I'm entering feature here. The owner is the view controller and we don't need any options here. So with that, we do not yet have a view because if we have a look at 
our documentation here, it states that it returns the load nip named function returns an array of any object. And what we can do here is simply choose the first element and then cast it to a feature view. But before we bring our feature view to our view controller, I'd like to put an if statement around that whole statement here. And with that, we check if this whole thing here works and we can assign that to our constant feature view two here, um, then we can proceed and use our feature view without force unwrapping it, since this is definitely an optional feature view here that, and this is not, it's not possible to use self.view and add sub view and add an optional UI view here. So instead of force unwrapping it, we're using a flat statement here. And with that, we are sure that this is not nil and that everything we intended here also worked. So let's then have a look at that in the simulator and see what happens here. And here we go. And there is our feature view. And the cool thing about that is that again, we have full control about everything that's going on here. So what we could do is for example, add um, a specific title. So we could use our feature view here and use the feature title and set it to cool feature. And of course we should use the text property here. We could also use feature view two and the pur uh, purchase button and we could add a target here. And with that, give that button a specific functionality. We could use self here. We should write a function as a selector here. So maybe feature one purchase button pressed. Then we have a sender, which is a UI button. And then we could print feature or cool feature, cool feature purchased. And then we can use that selector here selector in view controller. And we want the feature one button pressed um, function for the control event touch up inside. So just to quickly recap what we just did, we've used the purchase button outlet, which we added to the feature view class. This is this one here. This is our UI button that we've connected to the button right here. Since it does not have an IB action associated with it, what we have done here is added a target, um, which we, the owner is our view controller class. And with the selector, we specified a specific function that should be called for a specific event like touch up inside in our case. And this is the function view controller dot feature one purchase button pressed that we want to call. And this function we also implemented, we gave it one parameter, which is the sender button. And we added one line of code, which, which just prints one line into the console. And the cool thing about what we just did with the whole feature view is that we can copy the whole block of code here, paste it right there, rename our feature view to feature view uh, three. I'm going to delete the add target line here. Also rename our feature view here two times to add it yet another time. Um, let's say another one as a feature title. And what we also should do if we copy it, we should change the frame, its origin and its Y position, maybe set it to 500 pixels or let's say 400 pixels so that it is not at the same position as our feature view two. And we could also change feature view three and its background color, to let's say UI color gray. So we have again, full control about our feature view. And with that, I just wanted to demonstrate that you can add multiple instances here. And here we are. So we have cool feature with an orange background, which is so to speak, the uh, default background that we have specified in our zip file, we can change the title, we can add functionality right here. So there's the buy feature button and cool feature purchased is called if I press it here, it is not called and we have two different titles. 
So this is a great technique to use UI view in a very efficient way. And tomorrow we are going to see another use case for this approach that we have done just yet. So I hope you liked this second video of our advent calendar series. There are still 22 more videos to come in 22 days until Christmas Eve. So I hope to see you tomorrow and thanks for watching.